Once upon a time, when the moon hung low in the sky, casting a ghostly glow over the ancient village, shadows danced among the trees, and the air was thick with an eerie silence. It was in this land where folklore and reality intertwined, where the boundaries between the living and the dead were often blurred. In this mystical world, one creature stood out as a figure of dread and fascination, the Jiangshu. The Jiangshu are often referred to as hopping vampires or stiff corpses because of their physical appearance and limited mobility. They contrast heavily with the vampires from the Western world, which are nimble and quick. However, that doesn't mean that the Jiangshu were harmless. Like their Western counterparts, they too possessed an insatiable hunger. Unlike their Western counterparts, their choice of sustenance was something quite different. But before we get into all that, let us start from the beginning. This is the story of the Jiangshu. The origins of the Jiangshu are rooted in ancient beliefs about the afterlife and the restless dead. These beliefs are deeply intertwined with the Chinese understanding of spirits and the afterlife, where improper handling of the deceased can lead to dire consequences. It is said that a body can become a Jiangshu under several conditions. One of the most common causes is the lack of a proper burial. In traditional Chinese culture, it is crucial to bury the dead with respect and to perform the necessary rites to ensure their peaceful passage to the afterlife. If these rites are neglected, the spirit of the deceased may become restless and reanimate the body, turning it into a Jiangshu. Another origin story involves natural phenomena and supernatural interference. If a body is struck by lightning, or if it absorbs too much yin energy, which is associated with darkness and cold, it can transform into a Jiangshu. Yin energy is believed to be a powerful force that can disturb the natural world, causing the dead to rise. Some legends tell of malevolent spirits or curses that can reanimate corpses. These spirits are often seeking revenge or have unfinished business in the mortal world. When they inhabit a body, they imbue it with unnatural life, creating a Jiangshu. These malevolent spirits are driven by a relentless hunger for the life force of the living, which sustains their unnatural existence. Jiangshu do not have early years as living beings. Their existence begins with their death and subsequent reanimation. This transformation is both a curse and a new form of existence. Unlike living creatures, Jiangshu do not grow or age. Their bodies remain stiff and rigid, a grim reminder of their undead state. They are propelled by a malevolent force that gives them a semblance of life, but their existence is a dark parody of true life. The birth of a Jiangshu is often marked by tragedy and neglect. In many stories, the transformation occurs in lonely, desolate places where the dead have been forgotten. These areas are steeped in negative energy, which fuels the creation of Jiangshu. The neglected dead, left without proper rites or remembrance, become the perfect vessels for malevolent forces seeking to return to the world of the living. Once reanimated, Jiangshu are driven by an insatiable hunger for qi, the life force that flows through all living things. This hunger compels them to seek out the living, and their presence is often accompanied by a sense of dread and unease. The villagers and townsfolk who encounter them must rely on ancient knowledge and rituals to protect themselves from these fearsome creatures. The stories of Jiangshu serve as cautionary tales about the importance of honoring the dead and respecting the natural order. They remind us of the thin veil between life and death and the dire consequences that can arise when that balance is disturbed. Jiangshu appear as pale, stiff human corpses and can be both male or female. They often dressed in traditional Chinese burial clothes, such as robes from the Qing dynasty, these garments, usually dark and ornate, contrast sharply with their ghastly, pallid skin. Their faces are expressionless, with hollow, lifeless eyes that sometimes hold a glint of malevolent intent. Since their bodies are deceased, they possess stiff limbs and a rigor mortis-like condition, forcing them to move by constantly hopping, which is both eerie, grotesque, and in some cases, hilarious. Despite their terrifying appearance, Jiangshu are vulnerable to several weaknesses. They are repelled by garlic, much like Western vampires, 
and are terrified of mirrors. Seeing their own reflection is believed to remind them of their undead state, causing them to retreat. The sound of a rooster's crow signaling the approach of dawn can also drive them away. Dawn represents the end of their nightly reign and the return of the living's world. One of the most effective means of neutralizing a Zhang Shi is through the use of the iconic yellow talisman paper, which is covered in special symbols and characters. These symbols, often inscribed by Taoist priests, are affixed to the Zhang Shi's forehead, immobilizing it and rendering it harmless. The talisman must be written with specific incantations in red ink, believed to possess the power to subdue the undead. Zhang Shi are said to be blind, relying on their heightened sense of smell and hearing to detect the living. They can sense the breath of humans, which guides them to their prey. This characteristic makes them particularly dangerous in enclosed spaces where escape is difficult. As mentioned before, the primary role of a Zhang Shi is to drain the life force, or Qi, from the living to sustain its unnatural existence. This Qi sustains their undead state, making them almost parasitic in nature. They are often depicted as solitary creatures, driven by an insatiable hunger and a sense of malevolent purpose. They wander the night, seeking victims to satisfy their need for qi. Zhang Shi do not form relationships in the way living beings do. However, they do have interactions with humans, particularly those who seek to control or destroy them. These encounters are often fraught with danger, fear and the use of protective charms and rituals. Taoist priests and exorcists are frequently depicted in folklore as the primary adversaries of Jiang Shi. Armed with talismans, peach wood swords, and other protective tools, these spiritual warriors engage in battles to banish or neutralize the undead. The encounters are intense and often involve elaborate rituals designed to subdue the Jiang Shi and protect the living. In some tales, Jiang Shi are controlled by sorcerers or necromancers who use them as tools to carry out their bidding. These sinister figures use dark magic to reanimate corpses and command them to perform tasks or wreak havoc on enemies. The Jiang Shi in these stories are mindless puppets, obeying the will of their masters without question. Jiang Shi also interact with other supernatural beings in Chinese folklore. They are sometimes depicted alongside other spirits and demons, forming alliances or rivalries in the shadowy world of the supernatural. Despite their fearsome nature, some legends suggest that Zhang Shi retain a fragment of their former selves. There are stories of Zhang Shi who, upon encountering loved ones, hesitate or show signs of recognition. These moments are fleeting and often end tragically, as the undead cannot truly reconnect with the living. In Chinese folklore, the Zhang Shi sparks both fear and curiosity. Known as hopping vampires, these pale and stiff creatures terrorize the humans of ancient China. Each story about them serves as a reminder of the thin line between life and death and the importance of respecting the deceased. Let us delve into some tales about the Zhang Shi. The Village Plagued by Zhang Shi In a remote village nestled deep within misty mountains, life had always followed a tranquil rhythm. But that changed one fateful autumn when strange occurrences began to unsettle the inhabitants. At first, it was subtle. Shadows seemed to move on their own, and an oppressive silence enveloped the nights, as if the very air was holding its breath. Then, the villagers began to fall ill without explanation. Their energy sapped away, and some even vanished without a trace. Fear gripped the village. The elders, who held on to the old ways and ancient knowledge, feared the worst. They whispered among themselves, their voices trembling as they spoke of the Zhang Shi. According to their stories, these hopping vampires were reanimated corpses, seeking to drain the life force from the living. One day, a wandering Taoist priest named Master Li arrived at the village. Renowned for his skills in exorcism and dealing with the supernatural, he offered his help to the desperate villagers. With a calm and authoritative demeanor, he assured them that he would rid their village of the malevolent presence. Master Li set up an altar in the village square. Incense smoke curled into the air, and the villagers watched in hushed anticipation as the priest began his ritual. 
Chanting incantations, he called upon the spirits to guide him to the source of the evil. As the ritual progressed, a strange energy seemed to pulse in the air, leading Master Lee to an old, abandoned house on the outskirts of the village. The house had long been left to decay, its windows shattered and its walls covered in creeping vines. As Master Lee approached, the air grew colder, and an unsettling silence fell. Inside, he found a scene that confirmed the villagers' worst fears. A Zhang Shi lay dormant in a coffin, barely restrained by old, worn talismans that had lost their power over time. With steady hands, Master Li began to reinforce the talismans, chanting powerful incantations to bolster their strength. The Zhang Shi stirred, its lifeless eyes opening to reveal a sinister glint. It began to struggle against the restraints, its movements jerky and unnatural. Undeterred, Master Li continued his exorcism. The room filled with a brilliant light as the talismans glowed, and the Zhang Shi let out an eerie, guttural sound. With one final incantation, the malevolent spirit was banished, and the Zhang Shi collapsed, lifeless once more. The village, freed from the terror that had gripped it, celebrated Master Li's bravery and skill. The villagers honored him with a grand feast, and the priest humbly accepted their gratitude. Before leaving, he advised them to maintain regular rituals to ensure that no other Zhang Shi would arise, and he left behind talismans and instructions for their use. The Scholar and the Zhang Shi Li Wei, a young scholar with dreams of passing the imperial examinations, embarked on a journey through the countryside. His path took him through dense forests and over rugged hills, with each step bringing him closer to the prestigious academy where his future awaited. One evening, exhausted from his travels and with the sun setting quickly, he decided to rest in an old, seemingly abandoned temple he had stumbled upon. The temple, though weathered and forgotten by time, offered shelter from the elements. Li Wei laid out his bedding and quickly fell into a deep sleep, his mind filled with thoughts of the exams and the life that lay ahead. In the dead of night, he was suddenly awakened by the sound of heavy breathing and shuffling footsteps. He sat up, his heart pounding, and strained his eyes to see in the dim light. To his horror, he saw a Zhang Shi hopping towards him. Its lifeless eyes glowed eerily in the darkness, and its pale, stiff body moved in a grotesque, jerky motion. Panic surged through Li Wei, but he remembered the tales of the Zhang Shi and their unique weaknesses. He knew that these creatures could only sense the living through their breath. Holding his breath, he moved silently to a corner of the temple, praying that the Zhang Shi would not detect him. As the Zhang Shi hopped closer, its clawed hands reaching out, Li Wei felt his lungs burning. Just as he was about to exhale, he noticed a bundle of red strings near the altar. Recalling that red string was known to ward off evil spirits, he quickly grabbed it and, with a silent prayer, threw it towards the Zhang Shi. The creature recoiled instantly, hissing and retreating to the shadows. Li Wei remained still, holding his breath until he could no longer hear the Zhang Shi's movements. The first light of dawn began to filter through the temple windows, and with it, the Zhang Shi vanished, unable to withstand the purifying rays of the sun. Relieved but shaken, Li Wei gathered his belongings and continued his journey. He carried the red string with him, now a symbol of protection and a reminder of the night's terrifying encounter. Arriving at the academy, he was determined to succeed, knowing that he had faced and overcome a fearsome challenge on his path to greatness. The Zhang Shi Hunter Master Zhang was a legend in his own right. Known far and wide as a Zhang Shi Hunter, his expertise in capturing and exercising these undead creatures was unparalleled. He traveled from village to village, his name whispered with a mix of awe and hope. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, a wealthy merchant sought his help, his face pale with fear. My daughter, the merchant began, his voice trembling. She passed away recently, but strange things have been happening. I fear she has become a Zhang Shi. Master Zhang nodded, his expression stern but understanding. He had encountered countless such cases and knew the signs all too well. He agreed to help, 
and followed the merchant to his grand home, a place now shrouded in an air of dread. They descended into the family crypt, a place that should have been a peaceful resting spot for the deceased. Instead, it was unnaturally cold, the air heavy with the scent of decay. As they moved deeper, the faint sound of scratching echoed through the chamber, sending chills down their spines. Emerging from the shadows, the merchant's daughter appeared, but she was no longer the gentle soul her father remembered. Her eyes were vacant and her movements jerky. The talisman that should have kept her at bay dangled uselessly from her forehead, torn off in her rage. Without hesitation, Master Jang stepped forward. He quickly tried to place a new talisman on her, but she tore it away just as swiftly. Realizing that the talisman alone would not suffice, he drew his peach wood sword, a weapon imbued with the power to subdue malevolent spirits. With a precise strike, he incapacitated the Zhang Shi, her body crumpling to the ground. But his work was far from over. Master Zhang began a complex exorcism ritual, chanting incantations that filled the crypt with a holy resonance. The Zhang Shi writhed and screeched, but the power of the ritual was undeniable. With a final resounding chant, the malevolent spirit was banished and the body of the merchant's daughter lay lifeless once more, free from the curse. The merchant, tears streaming down his face, offered Master Jang a substantial reward, but the hunter refused, his mission driven by a sense of duty rather than greed. It is my duty to protect the living from the undead, he said simply before departing into the night. In Chinese culture, the line between the living and the dead is one of profound importance. To prevent the rise of Zhang Shi, rituals and prayers are woven into the fabric of daily life. Proper burial rites and respectful treatment of the deceased are paramount. Families take great care in ensuring that their loved ones are buried according to tradition, with all necessary rites performed to guarantee a peaceful passage to the afterlife. Regular rituals are conducted to honor ancestors and keep malevolent spirits at bay. Families often visit the graves of their ancestors, offering food, incense, and prayers. These acts are not merely symbolic, but are believed to maintain the well-being of the departed and ensure they do not become restless spirits. One of the most significant events in this context is the Ghost Festival, held during the seventh lunar month. This festival is a time when the boundary between the living and the dead is believed to be at its thinnest. People make offerings of food, burn incense, and perform rituals to appease wandering spirits, including Zhang Shi. It is a time of great reverence and caution, as neglecting these rituals could invite misfortune. Taoist priests play a crucial role during these times. They conduct ceremonies to cleanse areas of negative energy and protect communities from the threat of reanimated corpses. Their knowledge of incantations, talismans, and exorcism rituals is vital in maintaining the balance between the worlds of the living and the dead. Communities often come together during these festivals, reinforcing the bonds of family and tradition. The rituals serve as a reminder of the importance of respecting the dead and the potential consequences of failing to do so. Through these practices, the living maintain a connection with their ancestors, ensuring that peace and harmony prevail. Zhang Shi remain one of the most chilling figures in Chinese mythology. These undead creatures serve as a reminder of the delicate balance between life and death and the importance of respecting and honoring the dead. The stories of Zhang Shi continue to captivate and terrify, preserving their place in the rich tapestry of Chinese folklore. As the moonlight fades and the first light of dawn breaks, the tales of Zhang Shi retreat into the shadows. They remain a haunting presence in the collective memory, a symbol of the supernatural forces that linger at the edges of our reality. The stories of Zhang Shi remind us of the power of folklore and the enduring fascination with the mysteries of life and death. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. What did you think? Did I miss any details? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome to the channel. I hope I earned a like and subscription in your eyes. If not, that's okay. I'll keep making videos until I do earn it. If you're a returning viewer, 
Thank you so much for your continued support. I truly appreciate all the views, likes, subscriptions, and kind words and messages. Without you, this channel wouldn't be here today. That's it for now. I hope to see you all in the next one.